Okay, so just finished work. Absolutely worn out, but I've got some bits and pieces I need to get done today. I need to get it done pretty sharpish as well. Um, on Saturday, I've got Dazza coming over and uh, Daniel, because um, we've got the glazing being fitted to the ground pond at the top of the garden. So that will be, if you like, the icing on the cake. In the meantime, what I've got to try and get done today, while I've got a chance, I've got to get the roof removed from the, um, let me just show you. I've got to get the roof moved, roof removed from the top of the grow on tank that was temporarily while they were putting the fiberglass in it. Um, I've got to get the skimmer fitted. I've got to get the returns in and sealed. And I've also got to get the um, blade fitted to the fence. So what I'm going to do is I'll rip the, I'll rip the uh, roofing off. Well, I'll say rip, I'm going to take it off because I'm going to reuse it. Um, and once I've got, um, I'll show you how and where I am going to be fitting the blade. So all you'll see coming out the back of the fence will be the blade. You won't see anything else. So let me get myself set up. I'll get back to you in a bit. Right, so I'm about um, an hour and a half in, give or take a little bit. So I've still got the roof on for the time being. The um, main reason for that is because obviously it started raining. Um, so what I've done, um, I've used CT1 and I've sealed the two returns in and I've fitted the bottom drain. Bottom drain was really easy actually. So I never did any cutting straight back in. So let me quickly show you what I've done. Obviously the CT1 is still going off, so just bear with me a sec. So what I've done so far is I've fitted the bottom, I've fitted the return over there, look. Um, and that's been sealed bottom drain has been fitted as well and I never needed to cut that so it went straight in um, fitted the skimmer that side so again CT1 I'm waiting for it to go off on there and on this side just bear me a second get back in so on this side I fitted a bottom return on there as well and again CT1 that so what I'm going to do now I've got to uh, make a modification to the Fence. so I'll show you that so as you can see I've made a little mark in there so I'm going to be drilling that in a minute and then behind the back of that I'm going to get up on the ladder so I can show you what I've done around the back um, and I'll set it up in again so give me a couple of minutes right so if you remember I created this a while back as you can see life starting to grow in there at the moment this is actually the corner of the road the main road so all this is is just some gravel boards spoil that come out the hole all we've done then is just put a frame on the top of that and then what i'm going to be doing with that is i'm going to be fitting a pressure filter we'll be sitting down here into a hose that hose then will run into let me just get down the ladder so the way that i'm going to do it so through the skimmer i'm going to connect a hose that will go into a pump and that will go through that hole. I'm going to then run it along the fence into a hole here somewhere where you can't see it. That will go into the pressure filter behind the back. There will be a hole drilled in there. So what will happen is you'll have the hose that will go into the pressure filter. So that'll go through all the foams, the alpha grog and all the other bits and pieces I'm going to be putting in there. It's then going to exit back through the fence here and then it's going to come into the blade here. Now I'm specifically only going to be using this for the skimmer. It's going to be just for the skimmer only. Um, and I want to do it in such a way you can't see any of the housing because it will all be hid. All you'll see then, hopefully, if I work it out right, <laughs> is all you'll see then will be the blade that'll be the only thing that was sticking out and hopefully the blade will be the only thing that you see there so it should look really really tidy so the bit's there the blade's there so i'm about to fit that you'll have to excuse the mess here and all the housing obviously this is still work in progress so obviously i'll get all this done as i'm going along um so let me set a couple of things up and I'll get back to you and I'll show you again. So that is how the blade's going to be fitting by the time I've finished. And hopefully you'll see no housing in any shape or form and then that'll be security. 
further down the line I might put some sandstone all the way along here but to be fair the way the fiberglass lads have finished it I don't think it really needs it to be fair um, I think it looks really really good so what I'll do is I'll um, connect this up obviously there's going to be no water in here for a while so I'm going to get this connected up uh, I've a bit of a play as well make sure I've got everything fitting right so it looks all nice and tidy and um, yeah, get back to you later Okay, I'll show you how I've um, set this up now at the back, so I'll show you this again now. So as you can see, this is the area that I created. I'll show you down there now, you can see there's the pressure filter, all connected up. You can see it comes in from the fence there, goes into the filter, comes back out, and then goes back into the fence. So, just bear with a couple of seconds, just climb down, you can see that the hose comes down through there look and it comes in through the skimmer so it goes in through the skimmer into a pump the pump then sends it up in through and in through the fence what that will do then is we'll come out and go into that bad boy so that's how it's going to finish with that blade it's going to be sitting on there now I'm not sure now whether I'm going to put um, some slabs on there some sandstone something like that I'm not 100% certain yet obviously it's still going to be work in progress um, I've got access to that filter from the back fence so I can actually go out onto the main road climb onto the back section of the corner which is the main road and I can go in and I can do whatever cleaning into the filter I need to do that's why I've set that up Again, really simple way of how I've done stuff for that as well. Um, just going to do some tidying up now in here. I've uh, got a few bits and pieces now that I need to get finished in the uh, workshop. So skimmers in and that's all nice now with CT1. Obviously it does look a little bit um, scabby for want of a better word. I'm not the world's best when it comes to doing sealing but to be fair it does exactly what it says on the tin. So it's sealed in place. So obviously that's a nice little job again. Again on the top of there, hopefully I'll probably look at putting some sandstone on the top of there as well. And then bottom drains in, so that's all finished as well. So that's nice and finished. So, and then the weekend, hopefully, we'll get this window fitted and that'll be the next. So hopefully catch in a couple of days. Okay, good morning, and it is a beautiful, beautiful day today. So, there's a couple of things I need to get done today. Um, Daza, Daniel, um, and Jack are coming over um, Saturday morning to fit the window. Um, I'll, I'll rephrase that, help fit the window. Because I hate to think how many's coming, but I think there's a few coming to be fair to come and fit the window. Um, and then we're going to be taking a trip over to um, see my mate Rob um, from Walker Coy. Um, he's got a um, conversation he's going to have with myself reference some uh, beautiful fish he's got coming in so uh, we're going to be having that conversation as well so uh, Jack actually sent me a message yesterday he said can you come down and see me oh yeah no problem at all he went uh, Massive, massive apologies. He's been incredibly busy because obviously he's been going everywhere with how stupid everything's gone with him and fair play to him and, you know, I wish him all the best because the bloke's just going from strength to strength to strength to strength to strength to strength. So, um, he's now um, dealing with some... Um, people in Poland um, in a farm over there um, and he's got some fish coming in from Japan so he turned around and said um, Lisa really impressed with everything's going on at the moment he, fair play the fact that you've just got on with everything and um, again massive thank you for that he said and um, got a present for you so uh, he's coming over next Thursday he's coming to pick up three fish out of the main show pond um, 
which have got really, really crazy in toys. I think he's going to be in a state of shock when he sees them. Um, so hopefully we'll be having an unboxing ceremony um, in a couple of weeks time. So like I said, it's the window being fitted uh, on Saturday. So we'll show you that. Um, in the meantime, what I've got to try and do, I've got to try and get some filtration fitted in an emergency. Obviously I've still got this one that I've still got to recommission. So now I know the Bio 600 works. Um, and that works on the main pond, as you can see, he's down there. I've got this one as well. So this one is its big brother, and this is the Bio 800. So the difference between the two is the one down the bottom is pump fed. This one's gravity fed. Now, as you re remember, there was a load of piping that I got fitted to it. Obviously, for the time being, I'm decommissioning that. I've made a slight modification to this in preparation. So I've put a bull valve on the end of there. Um, and then obviously that's going to have the pump that's going to go into there. Pump will then go in, feed around the back, feed into a return here, and also feed into a return over there. So I've got to make a modification to this. So as you can see, the ball valve's on there. What I've done is I've sent that into a T-piece. What I'm going to do temporarily is I'm going to put a filter on here, which will be a easy pod. That'll just be tempor temporary. And then on the end of this end, down here, I'm going to put a pipe on and I'm going to cap it off um, with one of the um, end caps that I've had from Walker Cook. So he's going to be sorting all that out for me as well. So a massive, massive big shout out to Rob from Walker Coy for helping me out with that as well. Um, and some other bits and pieces. Also CD Aquatics, um, again, big shout out for them. So they've turned around and said, love the channel. Bearing in mind, it ain't really been going that strong. He's gone, here, have this. So he's given me some um, weld, solvent weld. So you know, I really appreciate it. It's the small bits that sort of make the difference. So I'm more than happy with that. So I did originally turn around and say that you know I had no intention of doing any sponsorship, and I ain't. So, and I'm still maintaining that. Um, and obviously if somebody gives me something um, in support, not sponsorship, so in support, I'll happily turn around and say thank you. Um, and if somebody's given me a decent price as well, again, I'm expecting to be the same as any customer out there. Um, and again, you know, I'll give them a shout as well. Um, I want to treat everybody exactly the same. I've always said that from the start. So, give you some good news. So, project wise, with the window that gets fitted um, and the cost of gold label that I previously bought that's got to go in for the window and the um, CT1 so I'm actually going to do it a bit strange so it's I'm going to use both I'm going to use CT1 and I'm going to use gold label the reason for that is I want the gold label is clear and the CT1 is black so what I want to do is I want to use the CT1 on the inside window to fiberglass internal and then I want to use the CT1 which is clear which will go from glazing to open space so even if I have a small mistake on the glazing because it's clear you ain't going to see it too bad what I'm also going to do a little bit further down the line is I'm going to clad the front of it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get hold of some shiplap or log lap at the right price um, and I'm gonna log lap the front. <laughs> reason why I'm gonna do that because the entire garden is wood orientated why wouldn't I do the same thing over here. So going back to the good news. So we are coming to the end of the Grow One Pond project. Obviously once the glazing's fitted and I've bought all the burgers and everything else, okay? I want to take everything into account. I did say I'd be open and honest with everybody, okay? So the budget originally for this was 3,000 quid. I've actually spent 2,747 pounds and 14 pence. 14 pence, that's when you count up the 99s or the 299 bit of the 299 or the 90, 99 pence of the £14.99. 
that's how you've ended up with the 14 pence so there's about 200 ish quid left out of the 300 pound budget so what I'm gonna do with part of that remaining money I'm gonna do a little giveaway a little bit further down the line so what's this special okay I'll put an end cap on the end of there I've solve and welded that pipe on and then the intention further down the line is when I want to put an extension on if I need to I'll just take the end pipe off put a joiner in and then continue the four inch down what I could also do is put a joiner on there but then go from pressure pipe to waste pipe which is actually considerably cheaper so I could do that as well the downside to that is by the time I come back into here that's back to pressure pipe so I've got that bung on there so luckily I might be able to then still go waste into there onto the ball valve straight in so I could go waste onto an elbow onto a t-piece so it can go that way and then that will come back into there so that was what I'll be looking at doing further down the line short term what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep this up now so I can stick a um, four to three to put in a Nexus Easy Pod around here. Obviously, I've got to try and get this modified for the time being. It is only going to be a temporary thing. When I say temporary, it's probably going to be about I would say now I'm going to be about three months. I would have thought because uh, obviously there's still a lot of stuff going on. I'm quite nervous about this because I have heard uh, a lot of stories about them popping off. So what I have done is I've um, put in a bit of silicon sealer on the inside and then what I've done then is I've put the Jubilee clip over the top um, whether that's going to work or not I don't know if it does then obviously that's another tip but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that that doesn't pop off also what I've done as a safety measure because of the way that I've set this up even if I have a complete dump out, I'm still going to have enough water to around that area there. So I'll still have enough water in there in the event of me do having a dump out, I ain't going to lose all my fish. So I've done that as a protective measure. So bear in mind that goes down below ground, um, it's 150, no it's 300 mil, so it's going down a foot. So I've got a foot lower and that bull valve's up here as well. So if you can imagine that bull valve is sitting just underneath the window there. So if you look at just underneath the window, just underneath the window it takes you around there, which is what I've just said. So it'll take you to this it'll take you to the second one up. So bear in mind that these blocks are 200. So these it'll actually be 400. So there'll be a foot of water in there. So that's the way that I'm going to look at that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make some mods on here um, so I can get the easy pod in here temporarily. What I will do then, further down the line, is I will take the easy pod off, I'll put a tube on, I'll put an end cap on, then if ever I want to do any backwashing, I can use this to backwash everything back out. So that's the reason why I've set that up in the way that I've set that up. Um, for a bloke that don't know what he's doing, I ain't doing too bad. So catch you again soon. So, we've got a temporary garage or free card. Uh, what I'm going to do with the pond, obviously there's going to be, glazing's going to be going in tomorrow. I'll show you what I've done. So what I've done, I've temporarily retrofitted the easy pod. So, and I'm going to do it in such a way, bearing in mind that when the water goes in, the water's only going to come to there anyway. So, obviously I'm not going to put any extra in. I don't see there's any point. And then obviously because this is tempera. The reason why this is tempera is because at some stage Daz has got to come in and put a load of 4x4 posts up. So obviously all that area he's going to have to get into all the way down. So we can get the posts in for the greenhouse. And the same down this side. So what I've done temporarily, as you can see on there, I've fitted the control box. 
So I'm currently using an Evolution Aqua 20,000 pump. It's only a tempera, so everything's all in the test phase. The reason why I'm doing it up here is because the Jebra 10,000 is going to be coming up here at some stage. And then this one will be going back to the main pond. So that's what the intentions are for that. I mean, to be fair, I've coupled all the piping together. There's a cap that's gone on the end of that um, to uh, finish that off temporarily. So that will be the waste. We'll go through there, not through that one currently. So it'll still come in through the bottom drain. It will still come in through here. It will still exit through there. It will still go through the pump and it will still go back through the returns. The only difference I've got at the moment is as the water comes in, comes in through there, comes back into here instead of going out to the bio chamber. So like I said, I don't really want to start permanently fixing anything in at the moment because obviously everything else now is still work in progress. Obviously uh, Jack's dropped a bit of a shock on me saying that uh, there's a bit of a present coming, so obviously that's really nice. Um, and also there's one coming from a uh, top geezer called Graham Wright. Uh, apparently he's got a present for me as well, so uh, now we're all coming tomorrow. So I've got a few people coming down. I'm going to put a little bit of a barbecue on for him as well. Um, just say thank you, basically. So uh, catch you later. Right, everybody should be here in a couple of minutes. Um, obviously there's been an issue over the jacks and um, so obviously they will be over in a couple of minutes so what I'm doing is I'm prepping everything up now so you can see what I've got so these are the bits I'm going to be using for the glazing I'm going to be using parkside on a masking gun standing knife three tubes of CT1 and four tubes of gold label now also masking tape question you can ask yourself is why am I going to be using two? Basically I said I was going to experiment with everything so he knew exactly what it was. So what's going to happen, I'm going to use the gold label glazed into open space because it's clear. So even when you get squeezed out, if we have a problem because it's clear we can get away with it. Okay. On the inside, so glazed into fiberglass, we're going to be using CT1. That's in black. The reason why we're going to use it on the inside is obviously because it's black in colour but not only that, we can actually seal the inside to the green you'll, you'll barely see it so the masking tape will be sticking around the window to give us a nice finish once the, once the uh, sealant's gone off and then hopefully by the end of today we're going to get some water in there so hopefully we'll get some water in I'm not going to put too much water in I'm just going to probably take it up to about just over half and the reason for that is because Jack's bringing some fish over as well um, and I've got nowhere to store them so once all the glazing's gone off and we know that's all alright we'll put the water in and then we'll put the fish in so hopefully in a few minutes time they'll all be here um, and then we'll have some fun so I'll catch you in a bit another little tip for you before we carry on we're only going to use one um, nozzle and we're going to use this one. It's already been pre-cut, look, and it's got a preset diameter hole. We're going to use that on every single tube of sealant that we use. That way we get a continuous same size bead across the board. So another quick tip that was for you. I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed that. So we've got Jack here. We've got Mickey uh, Lawson, uh, John Dunn. So we've got a fair few people here. I've got Dazza turning up in a couple of minutes. Um, mix. Now John's had a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of the mad dog brew. So I'll just turn you around. Oh, hey John. Okay, how are you finding that slush? Lovely mate. Okay, what was that uh, little bit of uh, special stuff that you had Very lodged? strong. So, so. He's only had a little bit, um, and Jack's just had a bit as well. But obviously he's busy at the moment sorting a few bits and pieces out. So uh, hopefully when uh, Dazza comes, we'll um, start getting the glazing fitted in the pond. So, originally started with putting 
Well, plan was to put some glazing in. I was expecting a couple of people to turn up. For some reason, as soon as I word, used the word food, well, we'll show you. Say hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. That's just what Tracy does as well, look. So as you can see, it's food and everything else again. Obviously, it's going to be the TBR brew as well that they've, they've sort of tested. I've checked it's up to spa, it's there. Apparently it's up to par, spa, up, spa or par? Par. It's up to par. So, right, we'll get back to you hopefully once we've got the glazing fitted. See you later. So Jack's decided now that he's going to send up the drone. So hopefully, you're going to put this on your channel, Jack? No, yours. Okay, it's going on my channel. So uh, even though I think it should go on Jack's as well, to be fair. Because at the end of the day, we're all a team. Um, one lovable team, here we does. Special bloke here. <laughs> so you can see what we're doing. Now obviously it's about five o'clock now. So obviously we've had a couple of crises that have gone um, and obviously they've taken private. So, um, so obviously what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, get this glazing fitted and then once that's done I'm going to put a barbecue on. Um, a few people staying over so they can chill out and just uh, wind down. Um, but hopefully we'll get back to you in a minute. So uh, we've got some uh, drain footage taking place. Talk to you later. You know what the first mistake was, don't you? What's that? You're supposed to drive through the window first and then put masking tape on it. Yeah. To be fair, it should be measured, re-measured and re-checked. Yeah. You open it up? Yeah. You open it up? Not open it up, but measure it. We're doing it on the table. Yeah. You go over to the face, man. You go over to the face. Believe it or not, the drawings to within, the, they were to within two mil. Literally. It's a number the first time. So all you need to do now is just unscrew the lid. Not that one, you get the same size then.
That's close, that is. Because it's got anti-collision on, so when the when the branches blow, it's trying to push itself in and out. Setting. Oh, what setting? A pruning setting. We'll go and install one. <laughs> Take the branch off. How much putting on? The whole lot. <laughs> yeah, you put the whole lot on. The whole lot. <laughs> Is he opening his own trap? There's not even more. <laughs> Ten bottles of CT1. <laughs> I don't make 15 quid a bottle anyway. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you weren't even kidding. I think there's already enough on there, I'll do. I'll do. I don't, I, you can barely see it here. Less is more, mate. Yeah, but see this, you see this high spot here? If you look down, you can barely see it. Is that the brickies fault or the glasses fault? That's the... Glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the, uh, Anomalies. <laughs> yeah. That's all located in certain fixed areas. That was a bit Richard did. To be honest with you, you're going to miss all that. Anyway, I'd just put a bead across the top now. Uh, actually, no, I won't even do that. I'd put the window on now and get as close as you can, then back. Yeah, I got much left on. in that one. Yeah. Huh? That's five. That's <laughs> five. No. See, I assume straight block work. <laughs> and I'm not danger mouse. Two straight block work. I mean, to be fair, Stevie Wonder did an impeccable job, mate. We're going to offer it up first so we can see where we've got a down fill. We'll cut it and get it ready. Okay. Yeah, that'll probably squeeze the rest of that bit because it's not bending it. I can tell you all the craft things we've all done. I think we're going to use, I reckon, six. Oh, let me guess, you sat there vlogging, yeah? <laughs> God damn YouTubers. It's not going to be the easiest for you to lift to get back out. You're all What a verse, yeah? Fucking hell, mad dog. Put all the stickers off, mate. Jesus Christ. You want? Please fit. Yeah. It will fit. What? It will fit. Are you sure? Yeah. I've had total thoughts on that, mate. Right?
Tell you what, we'll use the same thick nozzle for the slot to start with. Yeah. And then we'll go after with a thin nozzle after. Anyone got the dirty nozzle? Uh, My nozzle's clean. Jack's lost his nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully by the time we've got the wood on either side and that can jack it in. Right, so good morning. This is the day after the glazing I put into the pond. Obviously, a lot of the uh, lads and lasses stayed over last night, uh, put a bit of a party on. Nothing really major, but you know, just to say thank you for everything that went on. Um, did go into the wee small hours, so uh, it was uh, alright. Big shout out to a lot of people um, come out and helped. So obviously Jack from the Holding Reefer, Dazza, better known as Danger Mount, um, coming over as well, John Dunn, um, Kane, our Daniel, um, obviously Teresa, um, and <laughs> obviously me. We had a lot of very uh, interesting debates yesterday. Um, I am being quiet for the simple reason is there are still people still sleeping. It is quite early in the morning to be fair. Um, we had some very interesting debates yesterday as well about animals living in different areas. It's amazing what happens when you start having a little bit of something to uh, tipple with. So, uh, the Wolverhampton Warbler, the Red Robin, uh, the Bogmoor something. Uh, what else was that? There was a, a Hemley Harvester Mouse. Um, Huddersfield snake, um, something to do with some cobra. Anyway, it was conversations about different animals. It's amazing what you talk about when you've had a bit of a drink. And obviously, when they uh, they was watching the football as well, so that was quite interesting. Anyway, enough of me waffling on. All you're interested in is what does did the wind fit properly? Does it look alright? So, in answer to the question, if you remember when Daz originally cut it all out, we set it out at 910 or 1210 so we had a 10 mil either side we had a small minor little problem nothing really major because uh, when I did those calculations yes the calculations were really good but then we had to put the fiberglass on top of that and then we never checked it after we assumed it was all right so honestly genuinely we made no modifications to the window at all but it was very 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 tight so it's like imagine pair of size 10 hands trying to pair a, pair a, pair a pair of size sevens in um, 20 mil thick glass it did go in and it did look really good so i am going to show you now so without further ado that's what she looks like so obviously there's uh, still a bit of a mess around here and obviously we're still going to tidy up tomorrow so and you can see i mean kane did a fantastic job with uh, sealing the inside bear in mind all this is going to be cladded so all, all the, the bottom part down here all that's going to be cladded and it's all going to be cladded at the top this is a nice stand up area you can see how thick that window is right and obviously you can see there exactly how tight it was so you can see there is some 
play there, but obviously we expected that anyway. That was expected. Um, and exactly the same on that side. So, and again, really, really tidy job. As you can see, we've got a blade over there as well. And obviously a bit of tidiness. One thing I had brought to my attention yesterday, and I'm a little bit disappointed about, um, I've got a contact uh, company today, because that's a skimmer, and that's how it came. But apparently, there's supposed to be something that goes inside there. So uh, I'm going to have a search around today, see if I can find that. Um, if I can't, then obviously I'll contact them and let them know what's going on with that. I'm just going to quickly show you, it's going to go upside down, and I'm going to quickly show you the quality of the way that they've sealed the inside. Look at that. All the way down. And it fits nice and snug inside as well. So, bear in mind that this will have um, a capping on top of it. So, but if you can see, you can see how thick that, see how thick it is. So, um, so yeah, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee um, and then what we're going to do is a uh, bit of tidying up a little bit later on. Um, I'm going to put a dinner on um, for everybody that's here as well. So I'll put a bit of a dinner on for them as well. Um, again, just to say thank you. So uh, I'm going to come back to you in an hour or so and then we'll start doing the, uh, the filling process. Um, I did say before that obviously everything in here is going to be tempera <coughs> for the time being. It's not all static because Daz has got to come down and do all the stuff for the greenhouse project. If I put everything in permanent and then he's got to start sticking 4 before postings where where they need to be and more stuff's in the way, it's going to cause more problems it's going to solve. So uh, we are getting close to coming to the end of this project on this part of the project as well. Um, what I'm going to do as well is, if you remember, um, I did a spawn project. Um, I'll take it in. Hold on two seconds. So if you can remember, we put this polytunnel in um, with a fiberglass tank that was inside. So I'm uh, just going to walk into it now. Um, I think there's a couple of hundred fry in here. Maybe. So before I actually show you, in fact I'll show you now. So as you can see, there is uh, quite a few in here. Uh, Daz has predicted there's probably in the regions of about 400,000. John Dunn predicted about between, I think he predicted 500,000. I Me, mean, I thought there was probably about 200,000. But if you look there, they almost look like grass seed in the ground. So quite mad, actually. So. Uh, yeah, there's a fair few in here. So, one of the plans that I'm going to have now is, as you know, I like to try and help everybody wherever I can. So, um, I'm going to leave these for about uh, 12 weeks, something like that. Come back and do another video. And then, um, if you want some, you can come and have some. We'll leave it to that for a bit. So, Catch you later when we start doing the fill up of the uh, pond at the top. Like I said, it's not going up full to the top. Um, it's going to go up about three quarters. Um, and that's just so I can get it. all my understanding, make sure we've got no leaks and all the other bits and pieces. So, uh, yeah, so I would like to do an underwater shot of this fry, to be fair. Uh, hold on two seconds, let me see what I can do. Right, so we started the filling process now. 
we started the filling process now. I've got the kids in the uh, conservatory. So uh, I love a lot of housing. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's right down the bottom of the garden. So it comes right up the top of here. So this is the second reel that's there. It's now connected into that one. And then obviously this one comes up. And uh, we've got a surprise guest. So, who we got here? Who's in the special window? How are you, Jackie boy? I'm good. I'm good. Feel good, yeah, mate. Just listening to the sound of running water. Hey, uh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Good crack, isn't it? You've done a brilliant job. No, I'm in fair play, but it's a team effort. So don't forget you've had a part in this as well. So at the end of the day, mate, it's all about being part of a team. 214 but, uh, litres so far. 214 litres? Yeah. Uh, let's see how far it is now. I reckon, just to get it halfway, I reckon 2,000 litres. Just to get it halfway, I reckon. That's what I'm going to predict. I think you need about two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. So, want the good news? I'm at 100 subscribers already. Yes, mate. Well yes, done. mate. So, well not done. bad for a build that we've got in place. So, what I'll do is, what I'll do, I'm still crap with this. So, what I'll do is uh, get back to you later when we're uh, three quarters full. Um, and I'm going to put a bit of a Sunday dinner on. Try and see if I can uh, fill Jack to the limit. Like I used to. Talk to you later. So, calculations were quite a bit off. I still am. We are currently at 1,466 litres. And it ain't even close. So I reckon that's going to be around the two and a half, three thousand, just to get it to there. And then we're going to fill it up as well. So I'll give you an update as we keep going on. So we're about seven and a half hours into the fill. Um, I'll show you. You tell me what you think. So, that looks absolutely pucker. Uh, like I said, it's seven and a half hours, and we are currently at 2,465 litres. So, at the moment, we've still, still got a bit more to go. As you can see now, that's started to fill up in there now. So I want to make sure I've got enough water coming in there and then once I've got that at its level um, then it'll be good to go. So uh, catch you again later. So I'll give you a quick update. We are nine hours into the fill. Now bearing in mind, I'm only just filling it up just enough to get it through the return. So after nine hours, it's mad. I'm just gonna quickly show you. Um, I think you'll agree it's, um, I'll show you. Catch you later.